starting grid for the Alpha Couriers race over eight laps here at Mount Panorama at Bathurst. Very strong field of 30 starters. Let's take a look the way that they'll line up for the event. Pole position has gone to Gary Walden in the Goodyear Mazda RX-7 with a 244-28. Starting on the outside of the front row, Peter Fitzgerald in the Yokohama Tyres Mazda from three, Michael Preston, the Bridgestone Commodore. From four, 16, Terry Ryan, the Fender Signs Commodore. From five, Paul Fordham in the SAS Steering Wheels Commodore. From 625, Roland Hill in a Commodore. From seven, Ian Palmer in another Commodore. From eight, Ken Douglas in a Mazda RX-7. From 922, John Sutter in a Commodore. And rounding out the top 10, Tony Scott, number six, in a Starion. 10 seconds to the start for the Alpha Couriers production car race over eight laps. They're racing. Gary Walden makes an excellent start in the Goodyear Mazda on the inside. Alongside him, Peter Fitzgerald, the two side by side to the first corner and it'll be Walden by half a Mazda length. Ken Douglas there in car number 41. 41 cars streaming through the left-hander and heading to the top of Mountain Straight. There'll be plenty of jockeying in this. There's Brad Jones in the Valvoline Starion. Had problems yesterday with that car and he's threading his way through the pack. Gary Walden in front. Following him closely, Peter Fitzgerald. The two foes are at it again. They're holding a three-second break in practice and qualifying. By Livingston Preston. in third place, and then Fordham, and then Terry Ryan. So it's pretty much as per grid order as they make their way to the cutting for the first time. A remarkable time from the Mazdas at 2.44. Tremendous considering that these cars are production cars. Available X-Counter. There comes Preston, Turbo Commodore, really working well up towards the top of the hill. Bridgestone shod, and by gee, he's pushing Peter Fitzgerald pretty hard as they make their way now to Reed Park. Gary Walden clear as they come across the top of the skyline. Michael Preston doing all the work, hammering away at the tail of Peter Fitzgerald's car. And Fitzgerald this time is a little bit closer to Gary Walden. Going down towards the S's. These cars all running on. Oh, and Walden gets pretty sideways. By G had to work hard to catch it as they came through the triple MS's. And I think that Fitzgerald needed that break to be able to get a decent run at Walden, who was just starting to make a little bit of ground. Tucks down on the inside as they exit Forest Elbow, pretty close to the wall there on the exit. Walden across to the inside part of the track, inviting Fitzgerald to run by the outside of him. Oh, dearie me, Fitzgerald pulled across to the inside. Walden's gone for the victor treatment on the lawn, halfway down Conrod. The other thing that's occurring is uh, Brad Jones is working his way through the field, the Valvoline Starion as well, so he's making up from, uh, for a bad start. It's on for young and old. Oh, oh Terry Ryan spears straight across the corner. He's looking, <laughs> he's looking for that long green fairway. 41, Ken Douglas from Victoria, Mazda RX-7. One of four RX-7s in this race. And moving up through the field a little bit, he got a bit out of shape, you'll recall, on lap number one. So he's tucked in behind Paul Fordham at the moment as they go to Motorcraft in the right-hander. Quite strangely, you know, 10.4 seconds, the gap from the Mazdas back to Michael Preston in the Holden. Extremely strong crosswind uh, blowing from right to left as we look at the cars. would make them pretty unstable down there because it's one thing a production car doesn't have. And that's very flash aerodynamics, although the Mazdas are a reasonable shape. And here comes Ken Douglas. Through on the inside. Gets rid of Paul Fordham. Some nice braking work. And makes it through on the other side just barely. This time through, it'll be three laps to go. Alden comes along pit straight. Still holding about the same break over Peter Fitzgerald. Daylight, of course, then back to uh, to Michael Preston. 17 seconds of daylight back to yes. Michael Preston. A very important race next weekend at Calder for these cars too in the National Tour, uh, Production Car Championship. So it's very oh. important. Oh, he gives him a tap. Fitzgerald gives him more than a nudge as they go through the left-hander. And Gary Walton won't appreciate that. Side by side. They can't help themselves. Well, we caught, we caught you, Fitzy. We were looking. So side by side as they head down towards Caltex Chase. Now, this is going to be very interesting. Sit on your edge of your seat for this one. I'll tell you what, Walden, there is no way he's going to back off. No, she'll be brave, brave, brave as they come down here. No, 
No need to show that there's a, a car passing. The blue flag was being waved frantically. But Walden seems to have been just a little bit braver. He got another tap then. He was closing the road off, though. <laughs> now Fitzgerald will make a lunge down here on the outside. Thought about it. Here he comes, a bit of a lurch. I don't know really what he's trying to achieve here. He wants to win the race, that's what he's trying to achieve. He well, he's got two laps to do it in, but they're knocking up dust and dirt and stones and everything. Let's take a look at our Caltex replay of what happened earlier on the lap before as they went up towards Forest Elbow. Fitzy with a big rush of blood, makes the dive on the inside, but there wasn't too much room there, so he had to force a bit. Bang, bang. He taps the blue Mazda twice but didn't really work because as they head back up to the mountain he's still in second place I will say this though he did give Walden a bit of uh, racing room alongside the wall there on the exit there wasn't much but there was enough Preston and Palmer and Preston's got the better of that duel again now after the two of them went down pit straight last time really having an argument coming around next time for one lap to go board so one lap for Fitzgerald to see if he can pull this one out. And I guess a, a lap for uh, Gary Walden to drive defensively. Yeah, I'd say so. But uh, Fitzgerald's made him work all the way for this one. And uh, it'll be interesting as they go up Mountain Straight, whether or not Fitzgerald can keep uh, close enough to keep perhaps <laughs> in the draft there. <laughs> Back on the circuit, meanwhile. Walden heading up to BP Cutting for the final time. And there's a few slower cars up ahead of them now, which, uh, which could make the difference for Fitzgerald and allow him to close that gap. Down to the dipper. And just look at Fitzgerald closing on Gary Walden. Walden going around the outside here of the slower car. Fitzy jumps in for the ride as well as they come down to Forest Elbow and they are back in the same spot. I thought he was thinking about an inside nudge that time. Very close to the wall on the exit going past Rick Scarf. Last quarter comes up for the Alpha Couriers production car finale. And it will go to Gary Walden. Check and flag is out and Walden will win it. Second spot will go to Peter Fitzgerald. There's Michael Preston across the line. He finishes in third place. And the car's on their slowdown lap now. So let's recap the placings for you. The win going to Gary Walden in the Goodyear Mazda RX-7. Second spot to Peter Fitzgerald. Third to Michael Preston in the Bridgestone Commodore. Fourth to Ian Palmer. And fifth to Kenny Douglas.